This is the first time we are having a Zoom meeting with our parents. So if there are some technical difficulties, I apologize in front. But as a kind of norm, you know, running these big meetings through online is kind of challenging. So what I would like to do is I'm going to mute everyone so we can have, we can hear actually uh, the slide. You can see, see the slide, you can hear me. And I'm going to connect uh, the rest of the administrators moving forward. And you know that there is chat box at the bottom. You can always put your questions there. So after hearing you, and I'm just going to mute everyone. And we will just go ahead and start. All right. Angel. So. Mute all. Feels calling. Can everyone mute your devices, please? Uh, I'm trying to mute. Looks like some. Yes. Yes, I think we are good now. All right. So, so far we have 49 people. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear Horizon parents. I hope you are all doing well. Uh, the reason that we wanted to have this meeting is actually, honestly, and I let me confess that, we missed you. We missed you. We missed seeing you. We missed hearing you. We missed being with you in the events. Normally, at this time of the year, we had, you know, the concerts, meetings, parent-teacher conferences, some other events like musicals, this and that. So we could, or we were seeing you every day in the morning, or in, during the drop-off or in the afternoon during the dismissal. So we were actually able to talk to you, you were able to talk to us, etc. So we definitely missed you. All the information that you are gonna see today, that could be easily communicated with you through an email, but we wanted to also, it, we wanted to make it more organic, like a kind of uh, a live meeting. So you can also ask questions if that is. And we can share our stories, we can share our you know, hope and future plans easily. So that's why we wanted to have this you know, short parent meeting. And we wanted to choose this time. We thought that that is you know, more convenient than the mornings because mornings usually teachers are, or our students yourself may be busy with the, the remote learning. That's why you know, we chose this time. So, and I really appreciate taking your time and attending this. So I hope it, this becomes a, a positive and productive meeting. So what is our goal today? To clear some expectations and to hear from you. And, and so we can, we can move forward better. It's been four weeks. So this today was the 20th day of our remote learning. And 20 days means it's a month. It's definitely a month of instruction. So this is what, this is what we have tried. And based on the feedback that we received from you, from our parents, based on the feedback we received from our authorizer, the commission, and our uh, management organization, we feel that the school is fulfilling its responsibilities, fulfilling the, the instruction that is required at this time of the, the crisis, that I can say. So, what is our what is our norm as a school remember at the beginning of the year we had mentioned our philosophy as a school as teachers as parents as kids is positive thinking mr kartal how can we think positively in these conditions the whole world just shut down the whole world is going through a big transformation a big change there are lots of things happening if you watch the movie if you watch the news and if you hear from people and if you go to even the the uh, a grocery grocery center grocery you know a market like yesterday i went to buy a something simple but i couldn't find it because it was just finished and it gives you that scary 
notion that what's happening, why the whole world is going through. Are we still going to think positively in these conditions? Yes. Why? Because we are parents, we are educators, we are teachers, we are fathers, we are mothers, we are grandparents, guardians, caregivers. We, for our children, positive thinking is going to give us the energy to move forward. So that is the number one rule. Whatever happens, we have to be always positive and look for what is this actual teaching us. More family time, you know, like our educate, our uh, parents became teachers now. Our teachers are trying to teach while they're also taking care of their own children. And we prove that this can be, this, this is done, this can be done through these connections. And in the meantime, everyone, every one of us, parents, teachers, students can learn and can be better through this transformation. So that's why being positive and having that positive thoughts, even in these circumstances, will give us the motivation to do more. Why? Because we have little ones that we have to take care. So that is number one rule. So having said that, prior to this transformation, prior to this crisis, this is how our school was looking. You see, teachers are in the, in the classes teaching. There were connection. They were joking around. They were in the recess area, enjoying breakfast and lunch together in the gym. The teachers were going to the teachers' lunch and joking around, cracking some jokes. It was a community, and we are still a community. And you know that I'm sure you are hearing lots of stories through your kids that. This is still happening online. Maybe not that as perfect as uh, normal school days, but this is still happening. So that's why we have to maintain that connection. This is how it was before. And how is it looking now? If you go to a building, we have only two people because we have to, and we are still sanitizing after those two people uses the building for just two people. We are every day sanitizing the office area, the entrance, the center. Imagine that. That is such a uh, scary thought overall. You go to classrooms, this is what you see, unfortunately. But as you can see, our kids are learning through these you know, tech devices, through the Zoom meetings, etc. And in the meantime, our kids are connecting with each other because we are all human beings. We have to talk. We are social creatures at the end. We have to talk to each other. We have to listen to each other, tell our stories, tell our, our hopes, etc. So these are what's actually happening right now. And in the meantime, the staff is meeting. They are still thinking outside of the box. What can we, what can we do more for our lovely children and for our, how can we ease the job of our parents? Because we know that most of you are still working, trying to work from home. And most of you have more than one children at home. And plus the chores, this and that, it's quite challenging. Uh, so this is what the staff is actually uh, trying to do these circumstances. But we are always going back to the positive thought. We are always trying to find something hopeful, something inspiring, something positive for our future. Why? Going back to because we have children, we have the babies, we have our kiddos that we have to take care. They are looking up to us right now. So in the meantime, that is also teaching them something. Whatever happens, my mom, my teacher, my father, my grandfather, my uncle, they, are, they were still sharing their compassion with me. So that is the, that's a big instruction. That's a big teaching going on happening in our uh, in your homes right now. Uh, so, having said that, today's agenda. That was the introduction. Today's agenda. Uh, after me, Miss Aitekin, one of our assistant principals, and after Miss Aitekin, Miss Macaulay, Miss Sarasik, six eight, and Mr. Connell, and Miss Cardona, Miss Kalkowski, and hopefully we will finish with a QA session, questions and answers session at the end. So let me 
go ahead and try to explain the e-learning. Previously, we were calling it electronic learning, e-learning. Now we start calling it remote learning. Why we had to change the name? The reason we changed the name is since we realized that 75, close to 75 in some classes more kids, they are connecting with us every day. But for some different reasons, some of our children unable to connect with us every day. So that's why we are providing paper-based learning or instruction for them as well. So it is not, it is not 100% electronic learning. There is also paper-based learning. So that's why we had to change by the guidelines of ISBI as remote learning. And since we know about 25 to 30% of our students for again, different reasons. It can be anything, you know, in this crisis. They may, may I hope they didn't lose their jobs. Or I, I hear that some of our kids, there are some changes. They had to move to Florida or this, that. So for those reasons, they are unable to connect with the school. So that's why uh, we are, we are still following them. We are still following them, but not daily basis because of their circumstances. That's why uh, we had to change the name from e-learning to remote learning. The expectations are still same. We are still taking the attendance. We are still through the taking the attendance through our kids, you know, attending the Zoom meetings, submitting their work, etc. But just the name change. It's not a big deal. Just the name change. And expectations and the great book. So in order to streamline our work, because remember before March 17, people never expected this was going to happen like that. But there were a couple of people that I was talking and they said they, they closed the schools in Japan. They closed the school in, schools in Germany. They closed schools in France, this and that. We as the school administrator thought that, wow, this is, this may hit us very bad, so let's be ready. So that's why our school kind of take, took the precautions, took the measures to be ready. And we kind of, that's why some of our parents even emailed us that our system is up and running while CPS is still trying to, take, trying to figure out what to do. You know, when our educators, when our teachers are already up and running a system. But in order to streamline the work, our teachers, our staff created the website. Why? Again, that website, just, well, I'm just gonna show you again, that website will help those individuals, they will be able to go back and see what they missed, let's say, last week, okay? When they have a chance to go over, to be able to, to, be able to go over all the the assignments. So that's why that website is gonna help our parents, help our kids, help students, and us to streamline, to make it a smooth transition for next year. That, that's why I am highly recommending our parents to have a check to the school website and the, e the remote learning website. This is, you know, you go to hsabelmont.org on the corner, it's, it says remote learning and you have access to all the grades like K2, 3, 5, 6, 8, announcements, SEL, etc. So let's say, and you checking it with your own kid, it also, let's say, Miss Base, Miss Base website. So you see, they are able to see each other actually, like what they are doing. So that's a kind of maintaining the, the connection, maintaining the community feeling. One thing that we should not lose as a school at this time is the spirit, the school spirit. So especially in K-5 classes, having that connection with the school is, it's a, a big energy source for, our, for, for you and for our children. So that's why looking at these pictures, sharing your 
pictures, you're sharing your assignments, your good moments with the rest of the class is so crucial at this time. So our kids, our students should still feel it. I am part of this school. I am part of this community. There, I have lots of friends waiting for me there. So that really energizes them to, that really gives them something to look forward to. So that's very important. That's why I wanted to bring to your attention. And what else? Let's say six, eight, three, five, same thing, six, eight. So they are also putting all the assignments. And if you missed an assignment from last week, you will be able to check that and see that all the details here in these newsletters. And you know, our three, five, three to eight, they are using Google Classroom. So all the assignments are submitted through the Google Classroom and you can always email and communicate with our teachers through that. But this website is really helping our educators plus you as parents. So that is why that's so, it's a good practice. It's definitely a good practice that I see overall that's helping us. And so what we are expecting from you, you already, it's been a month, you already figured that out. The question, the big, the big question that you need to ask to yourself as parents, is my child learning? Is my child motivated? Is he, when he comes back to school, is he gonna be like ready to start sharp? So that is the biggest question. So that's why you are the first educators, first teachers of your own children. So we are definitely checking their assignments to send that. But in the meantime, this overall process, the overall instruction, the overall learning, through the online learning is definitely not replacing actual learning in the classroom. So the overall, we are just trying to maintain the status, the, the current status. So the biggest question that you will ask, is my child learning? Is my child motivated? Is he reading? Is he writing? Is he doing math? Is he thinking? So those are the things that that's why the good thing is there is flexibility. You can do whatever you want. In the meantime, you need to always bring that question to yourself. That is the biggest question. Why? The whole country, the whole world shut down now. This is the, all the schools, they lost their grounds. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we are not just gonna sit and wait this storm to be over. While we have our homes, we have these internet connections, we have all the resources, we are gonna push even more. We are gonna push even higher. Hey James, this is an opportunity for us to read more. This is an opportunity for us to watch some documentaries and discuss about it. And hey, when you watch these brain games today, what did, you, what did you resonate? What, what, what is the most important thing that you learned today that you can share with me? Or you ask your kids to teach you something. So you can be always creative, but in the meantime, everything goes back to your important questions. During the dinner time, during, while you're watching a movie, etc. you need to maintain the brain activity. This is so crucial, so deadly crucial, for our younger children at this age. So brain activity, the comprehension should be happening every day. They need to know that you are the teacher. You are not just the mom, you are not just the dad. You are the teacher there. So those are the expectations and our uh, administrators will share, will share some success stories with you just now. Other than that, uh, I can tell you how valuable your feedback is right now. Uh, we are getting some emails from you and I, let me just show you, you know, the survey results. So, so far, 
close to 100 uh, parents actually responded to our survey. And remember two weeks back, and then I, this is still open. So overall, the overall 75% of our parents, among about 100 parents responded, 75% says things that this is just right. The amount of work for ELA math science is just right. About 17% says, you know, too much. And for arts, Spanish, music, PE, this is this much, 80% says that that is right. And about 7%, 7.5% is too much. In general though, overall experience, 90% says it is just right, you know? And overall, did your child understand what was expected, him or her? Yes, it is 92%. So these are definitely good numbers. These are the feedback we received from you, from our parents. And adult support, yes. 60% said that, that there has to be an adult at home to do this remote learning. And are the, are the kids reaching out to their teachers? 75% said yes. 24% said, 25% said no. And are they 80% when they reach their kids, the, the, when they reach their educators, their teachers, are they getting any communication back? Yes. 20% says not applicable, but overall this, I can say that is the overall response. So this is the most important data that we received from you. About 92, 92.5% 90, said this overall experience is a good experience. This, this speaks via volume overall. And, you know, since we got this survey before our, even this structuring the, uh, what do you call it, the website and having some schedules, this and that, I'm sure this will even reach higher than that. But overall, this is what your responses so far. So as a parent, what you are saying is 89% says this is a productive experience for you as a parent. This is what it is. In the meantime, there are some, you know, feedback. They're thanking. Sometimes it is too much. The Zoom meetings, there are internet connect problems, this and that. But again, what I'm trying to say, everyone is novice in this. Everyone is new. It is new for us as educators, as school, it is definitely new for you as parents. But how we are making this, we know that we have children to take care, so we are being still positive and we are working along those, along those lines. And thank you, I do appreciate your feedback. I do appreciate your uh, spending time with your own children at this time. It is so crucial and I do appreciate you, we, all of us, the Horizon Committee is not giving up the fight. We cannot give up the fight. We will continue. We will keep pushing. And you will see our, our children will even grow more. They will, they will, at the end of this, they will have transformed through this process. And as long as we keep our eyes on the price, that is... The, the number one rule overall. Having said that, let me give microphone to Ms. Aitekin, Ms. Macaulay. Ms. Aitekin? Or Ms. Macaulay? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, parents. Um, I hope you are all doing safe and healthy. And um, I know it's not easy for these um, remote learning days. I have three kids and we are doing remote learning at home. And um, I know it's not that easy, but as HSA Belmont, we are doing the best we can um, under the circumstances. I think um, the students are still learning and um, the teaching and learning process, we didn't stop um, that process. So it's still going on. And we're praying and hoping that um, this will be over soon. So, and we can stay strong and positive during these days and 
we are hoping that we are going to be back to our normal life um, very soon. So I have a couple announcements about assessments and um, summer academy. Mr. Cartel, if you can go to the next slide, please. Okay. As you know, spring was our testing time. Like it was very busy with testing. Illinois Assessment of Readiness, IAR. It's formerly known as PARC. Illinois Science Assessment, NWA, and all district assessments were happening during these times. Um, unfortunately, we have to cancel all these testing, so we're not gonna have IAR or NWA or other assessments for this year. Um, but in fall, um, we're gonna have NWA map and all other testing again for next year. But for this year, we are canceling all the testing. And also Summer Academy, um, unfortunately, we are canceling that one also. Um, this was gonna be our first Summer Academy, but hopefully we're gonna do it next year. Um, if you already made your payments for the Summer Academy, it's gonna be fully refunded and um, you're gonna be getting an email regarding to that soon. So keep um, um, look, looking forward uh, for an email for that. And if you have any questions, you can just put that in the chat box. And now I'm going to pass the mic to Ms. McCauley. Mr. Cartel, could you advance the slide? Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I know I, saw, I was scrolling through the participants. I see a lot of K-5 parents, so I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, the most important things from the K-5 side of everything is to stay connected um, as you are. Please, uh, we have finalized our K-5 Zoom schedule. I know before spring break, some classes were having them and some weren't. Right now, every kindergarten through fifth grade class will have a Zoom class daily. And those are posted on Class Dojo or Google Classroom. And if your child is not able to attend the session live, they are always welcome to watch the recordings, which are typically posted on the classroom website. So uh, please be patient with us as we work with the teachers on updating the websites, but you will typically see the same information on the website that you would see on Cl Class Dojo or Google Classroom. The added benefit of the website being that if your child was with you know their cousins or a family friend or something of that extent they can also access the work and support the um, your child without having to log on to google classroom or class dojo so um, the website is going to be it's an excellent resource for everyone and also in those daily zoom meetings um, there, we're really trying to engage the students, connect them to their friends who they miss, I'm sure, connect them to their teachers, and still have some level of instruction so that our kids are ready for the next grade level. Um, the teachers are working very hard and very diligently to prepare lessons to make sure that they have the foundational skills that are necessary for them to be successful um, in the future. So um, I know sometimes it may not be easy. The best thing to do would be to create a schedule for your child. There's an example here if you um, in the upper right hand corner. If you go to the school website, there's a sample there and then there's a template that you can download yourself and make sure that you incorporate the your child's Zoom lessons in there. Um, also, we have incorporated the specials classes in Zoom as well. Kindergarten through second grade will have Zoom lessons with their specials teachers on Mondays and Tuesdays at 10 a.m. And then third through fifth grade will have Zoom lessons at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays and Thursdays. They also have third through fifth grade uh, character education with Mr. Putman in the afternoon. And third grade is on Monday fourth grade is on Tuesday and fifth grade is on Thursday. But that all that information is listed again on the website and um, Google Class in Class Dojo. But please help your child organize themselves with their specials classes and the regular classroom um, work as well. 
And last, just a reminder, I have a picture down here. <laughs> we prepared a lot of materials. The teachers kind of come in, like Mr. Cartel said, one at a time. They prepare work for the students. We've been sending home the contents of their desks and their lockers. That's what's in the big red bags, plus um, the materials that they'll need in order to finish their work for the rest of the school year. So if the teacher has reached out to you to um, pick up that work, please make it a priority so that um, your child has everything they need to be successful in this remote learning conditions. But again, I think all of you, this picture was taken last week and I know it's far less now. So I really appreciate all of you guys for um, taking the time to come in, grab those that work and um, help your kids. Okay. All right. Okay, Mr. Carta, I'm gonna ask you if you can um, stop your share because I do wanna share some items with the team. Okay. All right. So while I get this on board, I What happened? Is that sick? You, she's muted. Oh, okay, can you hear me? Yes, you're back. All on. right, all right. <laughs> so uh, like I said, first and foremost, I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for coming here today, making it a priority to be here today. Um, kudos to all of you. And I miss, I miss you all. I miss your kids more, but you know, I, I definitely miss you all. Please give those babies a big, big hug from me, especially my middle schoolers. Um, so I'll go ahead and start. I'm gonna move myself right here. Sorry, Franco. Um, so Zoom schedules and where to locate. Um, I just wanna specifically mention, uh, I, wanna, I wanna go through our website again. Um, so when you click on our school website, like Mr. Cartel mentioned, you go under remote learning, it's gonna tie you into the main remote learning website. The top hand tabs right here, this is very important, especially to middle school. Oh, you select the six eight tab, Just and you know there's some important information here. When you scroll down, your newsletters, the same newsletters that I, I sent to you guys on Class Dojo every day, those same newsletters are put are put here. Okay, so the reason why we have this set up is if you missed a day and you wanna go back and complete that work, you can. You just go on the website and you can find the specific day. So we have it for two solid weeks and we're continuing to do it um, on a daily basis. You can click on the day and automatically the newsletter is going to pop up. And so you can see all the work designated for that day, okay? Um, another, another really important item that I just wanna stress here is like Ms. Uh, McCauley said, the middle school also has their schedules, their Zoom schedules listed on the website. So it's so, so important that your child follows this schedule on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's the same schedule for each of the classes. The classes are designated, for, um, are designated by color, okay? For sixth, for seventh, and for eighth. If you wanna actually edit your schedule and make it your own, you can. You could just click on this tab right here, okay? The last thing I wanna show you from this website is if you scroll all the way down, I have a database of information of all of my how-to videos. Some of you guys have probably seen me make all these videos and annoy you guys with these videos. Um, so if you missed a video, especially for my eighth grade parents, because, you know, I'm, I'm very annoying for you guys in regards to those deadlines, just go ahead and click on um, this tab right here. And all of those videos will be here. Okay. So I have the title. All you got to do, I have the title on what the video is about. You just got to click on the title or um, I should say the web link and it'll bring you directly to um, the video that I have created. Okay. Um, all right. So it's so, so important that you are reading your emails and um, 
let me just select present, that you are reading your emails and you're making sure that your, your, your child is um, also adhering to the newsletters. If you are not receiving emails from myself or Mr. Connell or Mr. Cartel on a daily basis, please make sure to reach out to us, okay? You can, you can write it in the chat. I'm not getting any emails. Then maybe we don't have the right email uh, listed in the system for you, okay? Another thing that I want to mention here is on the middle school newsletters, all the way on the bottom, you will see a special section. Some parents have reached out saying, oh, does my child have to do all of this special section? The answer is no. Whatever special class that your child is in, that's the classes that they have to complete the work for. Now, middle school, it's not like each, grade, each um, section has uh, special classes together. Middle school specials are a mix of the A, B, and C classes. That's why all of the special um, assignments are listed in each one of the newsletters. So you only complete the work that is for your child's designated special class. And if you don't know specifically what class that is, just reach out to myself or Mr. Connell, and we'll be happy to help you with that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Connell, you want to take it from here? Oh, with pleasure. So, good evening, parents. A couple of things that we just wanted to make sure you were aware of uh, so they weren't uh, occupying any time in your minds since there's so much going on right now. So, if you're curious about how to pick up items from your child's locker or any personal belongings that they may have had in the building, we will be developing a schedule to make sure that everybody's safe and secure. Uh, so, please be on the lookout for that email or that communication from the school in the coming weeks to know how exactly we plan on having you guys come pick up uh, backpacks, jackets, anything that may have been left in the lockers. Uh, on the flip side of that, a number of you have also checked out Chromebooks or have items, uh, books, whatever at home. So we will be also letting you know when exactly and how exactly you can return those items come the end of the official school year in June. So again, please be on the uh, lookout for those things. Uh, the second thing is the importance of continuing what we're doing educationally and with your kids on a daily basis with their assignments. So please make sure you're continuing to check in with your kids about what they are and are not accomplishing. Uh, as a few of you may have discovered that uh, they may say they're online or they may be looking like they're on the Chromebook and doing work, and it turns out they're not necessarily doing that work. So please make sure you are checking their Google Classroom website, because that will check and let you know if they've completed an assignment, uh, turned in an assignment, not even opened it and looked at it. Uh, if you do have any specific questions about what they have or have not accomplished, uh, otherwise, feel free to reach out to the teachers. They are completely available and at your disposal on uh, pretty much a regular basis from nine through four o'clock. So you can feel free to reach out through them via email or dojo. Um, one other thing is to make sure that you're creating a routine. I'm sure a lot of you have and a schedule where the kids are getting up at a regular time. They're not playing their Xbox or playing Fortnite until 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning which is never a good thing. And then waking up at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning, you wanna make sure you keep them on a regular schedule. So please make sure you're doing that. If you have uh, parents that you're close with or students that you know, uh, reach out to them. Make sure if they're not on this Zoom meeting uh, or if you're wondering about how they're doing, please feel free to do that. Uh, we are a big family, we're a community. So the more that we have reaching out to each other, and especially in these trying times, the more productive, the better off, the more healthy we're all going to be, both mentally and spiritually. So please make sure that if you, if you know parents that may be struggling, or if you yourself are struggling, that you reach out to us, let us know what might be going on, because at this point in time, we are all here for you. We wanna make sure that you guys are doing well, and that your kids are doing well. So it's important to us that we keep those lines of communication open. And with that, we want you to let you know 
that uh, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate you as parents and your kids. We miss you guys greatly. And uh, with that, I will pass it back to Mr. Kartal. Yes, thank you. Well said, Mr. Kartal. I appreciate that. That's important. Uh, if there is a child that needs uh, our help, not necessarily your own kid, but you know that, you know, or either you hear from your child that one of his or her classmates is having difficulty, make sure we hear about those concerns. So we are trying to keep everyone's sanity in this, you know, bizarre times. And next, I, Ms. Sarasik, I think you are still managing that. So yep. go to next. Um, so I'll go ahead and continue here. Um, so before I continue, there were some questions in regards to what uh, Mr. Connell um, was mentioning. So one of the questions was, why aren't sixth graders having Zoom lessons with their special teachers? Um, they actually aren't having necessarily Zoom lessons uh, because middle school has a lot of Zoom uh, sessions with their um, core subject classes. However, every Fridays, the middle schoolers have what we call advisory sessions where all of the grade level um, students come together. So for example, all of the sixth graders will come together on Friday at uh, 11.30 a.m. And the special teachers are actually present there as well. So they will um, kind of go over um, the, you know, the non-negotiables be there for the advisory sessions and whatnot. Um, in terms of the eighth grade graduation pictures, uh, Ruthie, uh, we didn't get them yet. I actually have it in my agenda to reach out to them uh, this week. So I will keep you guys posted with that. Another thing, a parent also asked, how can we tell if our child did the work? Like Mr. Connell said, your best bet is to um, check in with the teachers um, and to see if, if your child did the work. Another thing, another great way, an easy way to do it is to go on your concept sys and you can view exactly what your child did and did not do. Um, so you can reach out to the teachers and log on to concept sys. Um, so I hope that was uh, beneficial. All right, so eighth grade, this is for my eighth grade parents. Um, round one application is due tomorrow, okay? I cannot stress this enough. It has to be in by tomorrow, um, by 11.59 p.m. If you do not submit your um, decisions by tomorrow, then your spots that you have, um, that you were accepted to automatically get declined. So you're gonna hit a real big roadblock if you do not submit. So again, real quick, I just want to quickly show you what that means. And again, thank you to uh, Ruthie who gave me permission to log on to her account. I'm not gonna go through it all because I already created a video that I showed you before on how to access the application and how to navigate through that. However, when you complete all those items, you must select accept, put your name here, type it up and press submit. If you do not press submit, then it doesn't show on uh, CPS's end. I'll give you a prime example of what happened last year. So last year, one of our students got into Whitney Young. They had an acceptance at Whitney Young. However, they thought that they submitted their, um, submitted their application, but they did not. Um, and their seat was automatically, uh, it, it was given up. So you don't wanna run into that, okay? Um, so like I mentioned before, uh, senior fees, if you, turn, if you already submitted your senior fees, we will be um, refunding that. Um, we just have to work on a couple of other logistical items, but we'll keep you guys posted with that. Same thing with the graduation event. Um, unfortunately, we can't have a graduation this year. However, we have some really great ideas uh, plans for our eighth graders, um, and we'll let you guys know um, in about like a week or two once everything was finalized, but rest assured that we are planning something great for the kiddos. Um, graduating, the graduating norms and expectations still stay in place. So if you, um, if your child was slacking 
the first three quarters and they were in danger of failing. And we've had this conversation, either myself or Mr. Cano. Um, I want to stress for those students to definitely use this opportunity that they have for remote learning to kind of boost their grades up. There are so many students that are using uh, this platform now to bring up their grades and to, you know, to, to finish strong. So they might have started weak, but they're using this platform to definitely finish strong. So um, I, those expectations and standards still stay. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to pass out a diploma to each and every single eighth grader. However, we wanna make sure that um, everyone finishes off strong because we have the highest expectations for each one of our students. Um, and this is just for the underclassmen. Um, it's never too early to start looking ahead into the future. So, um, especially for my seventh grade parents, uh, I am going to have a separate Zoom meeting with you guys um, in about a couple of weeks. And we're gonna discuss about um, the eighth grade high school application requirements. So um, we're gonna go over what you guys should be doing during the summertime so that you guys are ready to go when the application season starts rolling around in August, September, okay? So that's it from me. I will pass it along to Ms. Cardona. All right, hi guys, I'm Ms. Cardona. I'm the school social worker for those of you who don't know me. Um, I just wanna talk a little bit about self-care just because we're all kind of going through a lot of adjustments right now, being forced to adapt really quickly, take on new roles and responsibilities um, while caring for others around us. So I think it's important to kind of keep these things in mind. These are uh, things, even if you don't have a lot of time in your day, just small little shifts in mindset or just taking a few minutes for yourself. Um, so it's a really good example for your children as well. Um, so I think the first one, this is something I hear a lot from students and parents, just acknowledging the losses that we're all experiencing right now. Um, you know, we're grieving things kind of like Mr. Ansick said, you know, the eighth graders are grieving not being able to have their typical graduation. Um, students are grieving the loss of field trips, special occasions, being able to visit a friend or family member and just like the sense of normalcy that we used to have. So just to remind yourself that grieving is okay. Um, some might even be grieving the loss of a loved one. Um, so we all have big and small losses that we're experiencing right now. And I think it's important to not put value on those because they're all kind of worthy of that, that feeling of loss and taking time for yourself to kind of acknowledge that you might be a little sad um, when you have to give up some of those things. And then just making time for yourself, right? You want to be in the position to care for those around you. Um, and so making sure like you're taking time for yourself if you need to take a break. You know, I've been encouraging students to take breaks, um, you know, obviously not taking advantage of that time, but, you know, even if it's just a five minute cool down where they, you know, take a break from screen time, things like that. Um, and as parents, if you can show your kids, hey, you know, I'm a little overwhelmed right now, I'm going to take a minute for myself, that shows kids how to set healthy boundaries and communicate their needs as well. Um, ready for the next slide, whenever. And then just being realistic. I think there's a lot of pressure right now that we're all experiencing um, just to kind of keep achieving at our highest level. And while that's a great goal, um, I think we have to be realistic that every day is not gonna be a perfect day. There's gonna be some days that are better than others. Some days where we accomplish more than others. And so to cut yourself some slack now and then because we're all dealing with a lot right now. And then just being kind to yourself, normalizing emotions, normalizing emotions for your kids. Um, you know, it is a really stressful time and it's a good reminder to just kind of always remind yourself that stressful times will pass and no emotion, whether positive or negative, is going to last forever. So, you know, this will pass. And then just know that you do have a support system here at school. We are here as a school, school community to support you guys. Um, I know teachers are going above and beyond to make sure students are having like check-ins with their classes um, and to make sure that they're being cared for socially and emotionally as well as academically. Um, you know, we still have school counseling services right now. I'm still meeting with students um, via Zoom or just a quick phone call to check in. So, you know, if you or um, your student has an issue that you feel like is just becoming too overwhelming to manage on your own, please reach out because that is available to you and I'm always able to connect you guys to 
other outside resources as well. Um, so that brings me to my next point, which is just these are some outside supports that are available um, as well that I just like to share um, just so you have them. There's the call for calm that was developed in Illinois um, where you can text in um, to 552020 and then um, get connected with the counselor within 24 hours. Um, someone will call you. Um, this is also great for like if you know if you need food or shelter, um, if you're dealing with unemployment, this is a great resource. And then there's also the crisis text line um, where you can text hello to 741741 and it will connect you with someone via text that you can um, connect with. And that's great for adults and kids alike. Hey everyone, it's Ms. Kolkowski. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna jump right in. Next week, we would like to continue, well, we would like to continue some of our previously scheduled school events. However, they will look a little bit different. Um, and next week, we would like to do Spirit Week for our students. So on Fri this Friday, I will share a Google link on Class Dojo and through email and to students' emails also, where students can upload pictures and, um, Students will submit their Spirit Week photos next week. So starting Monday, we will have Missing You Monday where students can upload pictures of themselves holding a sign of a name that they miss. So it could be a teacher, it could be a student that they miss. They can upload a picture of themselves holding that sign. On Tuesday, we'll have Tired Tuesday. So students can upload a picture of themselves in either comfy clothes or pajamas. On April 29th, Wednesday, we'll have What You're Reading Wednesday, where students can upload a picture of themselves reading a book. And on Thursday, we'll have Throwback Thursday, so students can upload a picture, a uh, baby picture of themselves, or they can upload a picture of themselves dressed in a different vintage or era attire. And on May 1st, which is Friday, we'll have Spirit Day, so students can upload pictures of themselves either in Horizon colors or Horizon t-shirts, um, and again, on this Friday, I will share a Google link where students can upload their pictures and then I will post those pictures on Class Dojo and our Instagram and Facebook account uh, throughout every day. And then we're hoping that we have a really great participation, parents, teachers, students, so we can really keep the community feel going and keep students engaged in fun activities. And with that, I'll pass it back to Mr. Cartel for closing and any unanswered questions. Yes, next slide. Thank you, Ms. Kalkowski and Ms. Cardona for sharing the self-care and the, the spirit. Everything, <laughs> everything really depends on our parents right now. Uh, we as school, we are trying to facilitate the instruction, but in the meantime, it is our parents' responsibility to motivate the child. Oh yeah, May 1st is school spirit day and uh, April 22nd, it is this day, that day. So we, you need to show with your motivation, school is still on, it's happening, let's participate. Let's do this, let's share this. So that is the most important thing that we are, you are already doing it, you are already doing it, but I would like to emphasize that again, because that's, the success of all of this process really depends on you as parents and really depends on us why we are trying to take care of our little babies. Okay, having said that, let's uh, see some questions there. And uh, Mr. Ansik, Ms. McCauley, Ms. Leitekin, Mr. Connell, Ms. Kalkowski. Yes. Um, one of the questions I see is about students matriculating to the next grade, if there's going to be some tests for them or some way to determine if they're ready for the next grade. Um, I know for K-5 and as well as 6-8, um, we monitor the students' progress really closely with their teachers and have reached out to um, parents directly if there's any issues or concerns and work with those parents and those students to make sure that they are successful. So that being said, if you haven't really heard from us, it's like no news is good news in that sense. Um, we're following ISVI's guidelines where um, their grade will not be negatively affected in this last quarter. But of course, we ask that you do your best to make sure that your student is complying and completing work. 
um, as much as possible. I hope that question was answered. I think that was Gael's mom. Okay. And then... Um, Any other questions that we need to... I actually um, wanted to ask something. For the eighth graders, um, it is something that I wanted to do for the class. I needed to know, first of all, how many is it? <laughs> and I wanted to do something special for them because in reference to what's going on, it's not their fault, okay? And I, I know their graduation is very important. They work very hard. So I know that you guys are planning something. I don't know if Mr. Renzik maybe want to inbox me, class dojo, but it is something that I want to do them as well and something that I feel that they would definitely appreciate so whatever it is that you guys have in mind I just want to add on to it sure for sure I will definitely reach out to you I have I already wrote you down um, on my to-do list so I'll reach out to you we'll connect okay great thank you all right thank you um, I'm gonna jump in I see a question for kindergarten graduation um, I'll be working with the kindergarten teachers to discuss what's in the realm of possibilities and or we will be reaching out to the parents when something is formalized I also see another question in regards to eighth grade pictures um, that information will be finalized this week so we'll let you guys know in regards to that Okay, and I see some refund questions. Uh, I spoke with our treasurer today. We will confirm all the refunds for the summer academy or any kind of fees that we had to cancel. Uh, they will send a check, but as soon as we finalize all these things, all these addresses, we will receive that and we will notify you for those refunds, definitely. Um, this is a question that was PM to me. Ms. Kolkowski, can you speak a little bit about the CYSP requirements and the reduction that was done there? Yeah, so the CYSP requirements have definitely changed a little bit now. If you have a direct question about your student, you can email me and I'd be happy to answer your question just so for the sake of time, I'm not going through it right all right now. Um, and the mentors have also all been um, informed on the different requirements, so reaching out to your mentor and seeing where your student is right now might also be beneficial. Um, but please, please email me and I can um, give you any answers that you need individually. Okay. Any other questions that pertaining to everyone? So I see a question here in regards to are students going to be held back a grade? Um, Obviously, we don't want that. However, this really depends on how the child was doing the first three quarters, because that's when we, um, obviously, we were in school then, and we have uh, uh, a plethora of information and data um, to back us up. So the answer to that question is uh, reach out to your teacher and have that conversation with them, um, because I can't give you a specific answer to that. However, that decision will be a team-made decision based on predominantly how um, your child was doing the first three quarters and whether or not your child is ready to start for to start at grade level next year okay okay any other questions that we need to answer okay uh it's another it's a refund question so what we might be able to do is set up an email or something that you can make a direct request for any funds, Mr. Cartal? Yes, 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 definitely. Um, and then that can be communicated to the school at large via the webpage and Class Dojo. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, thank you. Any, if mm -hmm. there's nothing? Yeah, um, so I have two other questions um, in regards to the eighth grade graduation. Um, if we can entertain the idea of graduation ceremony in July or August, um, where we don't, we can't confirm that simply because we don't know how long this, um, so uh, you know, our current crisis is going to last till. So it's, it's, it's definitely a gamble. So um, we're not quite sure about that particular um, 
that particular request. And um, in regards to a dip your diploma, one of the parents asked me about um, if the child will receive a diploma. Absolutely. So based on the uh, based on what we have planned for our eighth grade um, uh, graduation, uh, your child will also be receiving their diploma as well. And another thing that I want to request uh, so for my eighth grade parents, parents, if you still have any questions in regards to application process or um, anything like that, stay behind and we'll continue our Zoom session because uh, I want to make sure that your applications are in by tomorrow. So stay behind and I'll definitely answer questions in a smaller group setting. Eighth grade, okay. Uh, and looks like we are done with our questions. If there's anything else, please let us know. You can still type there and we will try to reach out to you. Uh, but the recording of this video will be in the class dojo and the school website as well. It's a kind of, if you wanna just go back. And today we had about 80 participants, like minus our educators, we had about 74 parents. And I think that's a good number. We can, by sharing it, we will reach I'm sure we will reach most of our parents as well. Uh, but in the meantime, the most important thing that we need to keep now is our hope and our positive thoughts. Uh, that is, that's, I'm really urging that. And as a school, we don't want to think about next September, this will continue. But in the meantime, it is our responsibility to prepare for the worst. You know what I mean? So that is an important thing. The reality is two months before, nobody will think this. Now that is happening. We are all trying to do at home the life kind of slow down. But in the meantime, as a school, we are working to make this instruction better, to make this process better for our kiddos, for our children, for our students. So if, God forbid, we don't want that definitely, but in the meantime, if it happens next September, we would like to be even more ready, you know, because this year somehow we tried to transition. This is how much we could do, but in the meantime, uh, we would like to do better for our kids if the worst case scenario happens. Meaning, as parents, as parents, you know this, so you do not deplete your patience. So we know that patience is power. We don't spend the patience just as it is. We know that if this continues, we have enough power to maintain the sanity of yourselves, the sanity of your children, and this uh, instruction and learning. Otherwise, thank you very much. Uh, you know, sometimes while you are passing by the school, you can horn, you know, you can make some noise showing your support, and you know, you can wave or just, you know, uh, teacher appreciation because the first week of May. Make sure you send an email, send a message. Our teachers are really need your support. They have to really, they need to hear good things from you, good positive messages from you. So, and we know that that's not easy for you as parents. I assure you that it is definitely not easy for our educators <laughs> as well. Everybody is new to this, but I think this, the connection by supporting each other, we will win this at that. And thank you. And I appreciate you. We miss you. We love you. We love your children. We miss them. Tell them that we said hello and let them know that they are doing wonderful. Definitely, they are definitely doing wonderful. And uh, see you again. Okay. Bye, everyone. Stay behind if you're an eighth grade parent, if you have any questions.
Bye, guys. You can unmute yourself. Night, Bye. everybody. Bye. Bye, Juan Pablo. Bye, Juan Pablo. Bye. 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 Oh, oh, no. yes. oh. Bye, Zoe. Bye. Get out. Bye, Bella. <laughs> Miss you. Alicia, I said hi. Teresa, bye. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. I didn't see my transition. Teresa. Hi, Mr. Nancy. Bye. You guys are gonna bring me to tears. Get out of here. <laughs> Just they look so pretty. Look at them running all around the planet. Hi everybody. I miss you. Hey, nine o'clock, you should be in bed, Bella. Hi, Izzy. You should be in bed for tomorrow. I stand, but I didn't go. Bye. Okay, I gotta log out. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Miss you all. See you. See you Likewise. again. See you. Likewise. Keep doing what you have been doing. Great. Thank you. Bye. Right. I'm just doing great with an E. Yeah. I'm just great with an A. All right. Uh, no. Okay, so just to confirm, this is only eighth graders that are staying behind. So if you're not an eighth grader, I very kindly ask you to log off. <laughs>